Is MRSA something that stays forever? Asked Jeffrey for all. And Stardust Rect, we are glad, to, Stardust Turk, we are glad to have you join us. Uh, MRSA does not stay forever. MRSA, methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus, aureus, is not actually one organism. It's any Staphylococcus aureus, am I pronouncing that correctly? That does not get killed off by methicillin one specific antibiotic that used to work on all of the staph and strep. Uh, wait, did it work on all strep? I think it yeah. did. Yeah, it worked on all staph and strep, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Those, those gram-positive cocci, meaning balls or round spherical bacteria. And, and then over time, with lots of use of penicillins, uh, we got this resistant strain we call MRSA. And there's different ones. There's community acquired and there's hospital acquired. The hospital acquired seems to be um, not quite as aggressive and a little harder to knock off. Uh, and this may just be opinion. You tell me if you disagree at all. Whereas the community acquired seems to be a little more aggressive and get people that aren't necessarily uh, compromised or obviously not hospitalized, but is actually relatively easy to kill off with doxycycline or uh, Bactrim, which is trimethoprim and sulfamethoxazole or sulfa drug. And these are very common antibiotics that you see used for upper respiratory infections or urinary tract infections or skin infections. And we're, we're using them in place of something called Keflex or uh, Cephalexin, which is an early generation cephalosporin antibiotic, similar to penicillins in, in a lot of ways. Uh, when do you, so we're, I don't, by the way, I don't recommend Tamiflu for colds. Uh, because it doesn't work on anything but influenza viruses. The methicillin is so not usable or any penicillins. Uh, Keflex or Cephalex is not usable, so you have to use this doxycycline or Bactrim, and they work relatively well. Now, I said more aggressive. This is the, the so-called spider bite. Yes, thank you for hearts, I see that. Spider bite, that uh, people come in saying, oh, I have a spider bite. I have no idea why people call a painful red, sometimes with a pustule spot on their skin, a spider bite, because it's not. Um, there, there are a few spider bites I've seen in my career and they don't look like that. Um, you may have a bug bite that's a little red itchy spot, but it's not gonna be super painful with pus uh, most often. Uh, that can happen, but uh, bad spider bites like the brown recluse that I used to see in Missouri, uh, eats away a lot of skin. You get a lot of what we call necrosis or death of the tissue. And uh, when you wake up, or actually it's not necessarily when you wake up, it's just you notice it usually in the morning because it wasn't rubbing against something uh, and getting irritated when you went to bed and then the next morning this lesion has gotten worse and so it's rubbing against your clothes and you feel it and go, oh, it happened last night. Well, not necessarily. That may be just when it got irritated enough that you feel it. So we'll go ahead and treat it with the doxycycline or the Bactrim if we suspect that it's a, a resistant organism. The uh, treatment with antibiotics is for when it's infected and there's some kind of a, either redness spreading on the skin or there's a pus pocket. You gotta get that pus out and drain it. That's necessary to treat it. If you still have surrounding redness in the skin, what we call a cellulitis, you have to treat that with antibiotics to get rid of it. And then after that, the person still has MRSA on their skin, most likely, because you can't kill something on the skin with an antibiotic that you take internally. And there's not really an effective way to kill it off on the skin, or as we have found, it's place that it likes to hang out is in the nares, just inside the nostrils. A uh, very hard place to get. And there have been people who have experimented with topical antibiotics in those areas to try to kill it off uh, without success. Now, maybe they will kill some of the bacteria, but it just keeps coming back. So how do you get rid of MRSA? Is it with you for life? The only way to not be colonized anymore is for you to replace the bad bacteria with regular community-acquired bacteria. And this just happens over time. Here, let me get my pretty backdrop back on. Just happens over time with being exposed to the bacteria in our world. We always carry bacteria on our hair and our skin and our nares. And you just, over time, will have the native flora of your body become a non-antibiotic-resistant 
bacteria and how long it takes uh, it depends on whatever bacteria in your environment and who you're around and who you're touching so that's why we prefer for these people to be away from a hospital and just get their bacteria replaced with what it had been before this nasty bug got a hold. Now, why does it cause an infection in this little spot that we, I don't know why people keep referring to as spider bites. It just somehow got into a little tiny break in the skin and caused an infection. It's possible that it was in their bloodstream, but not likely and then got there. And the reason I say not likely is because if it was causing any kind of effects and it was in their bloodstream, chances are they would have had sepsis or a serious blood infection. Uh, so more likely is that it, it just found its way through a small break in the skin. Dr. Gwain, do you have anything to add to that at all? Or? Um, you commented that uh, the um, community acquired is more infectious. Now, you're, you're talking about skin infections, but um, for pneumonia, ah, yes. hospital acquired is much more difficult to treat and requires IV antibiotics. Harder to treat IV antibiotics. Community acquired seems to respond to... Uh, oral antibiotics, right. but I think it's easier for people to catch, and the reason I say that is because people who aren't hospitalized or sick are getting it, whereas the hospital-acquired pneumonia, uh, MRSA, it's not really hospital records getting sick with it who are exposed it's to it, it's patients. patients yeah. Somebody who's in some kind of compromised state already. Usually intubated. Usually intubated, uh, two venom. I, I repeat everything he says because I'm wearing the mic and I'm not sure. <laughs> thank you for your contribution to Ask Dr. Vaughn. And thank you for all the hearts there, by the way, and all the sharing with your friends and all of the subscribing to the Auburn Medical Group YouTube channel. We appreciate that too. 